back in the days of uh, you know, the 70s when the equipment, the production was so primitive that it, it was, it was uh, I'm pretty sure, fairly horrible. But having said that, there was a, the, you know, people's expectations weren't high. People didn't, they, 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 were, they loved what they got, even though it wasn't yeah. very good. It was just, it was new and exciting and the, the dawn of, uh, of uh, rock music being played in big places, it was very exciting. People remember with great fondness the you know, visits to see Led Zeppelin play or, or Jethro Tull or whoever it might be. And, and uh, it's a big part of their lives to, re to, to recall those days, which they, they often do with a, with a completely exaggerated sense of how good it was or, or I mean, tempered, th their memories are, are obviously somewhat tempered by time and whatever substances they might have been using wh when they were at the concert. So people do often tell me that they were at some show back in such and such a year and I did this or did that or the show consisted of such and such and you think, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not how you remember it. Well, it's not how I remember it, because, but I think my memory is probably a little better since I have yet to, uh, yet to try what most people call drugs. So I, I, I know for sure I was the guy who was uh, compass mentis on the day. You know, <laughs> it wasn't uh, wasn't me doing the drugs sure. back then. So. Well, on the other hand, Tull always had the um, that element of spectacle and theatricality. For example, you know, with the um, uh, Stormwatch tour and things like that, and under wraps even. Mm. Uh, there was there was a great deal of stagecraft and all. So I think in that larger venue, it, it made it. You know, there was a visual component that maybe you don't, you're not able to do as much anymore. In the well, the, the vi a visual component that, that was that was brought into those shows at a time when that seemed uh, appropriate. Um, but uh, you know, if you do that stuff today, it's going to look awfully contrived and very cheesy and very showbiz. Mm -hmm. Because when Michael Jackson and Madonna and, and U2 and other acts in the 80s started to do these big production shows, it, you, you realize that you could never compete financially with, with, with those folks. But also it, it then became less quirky and odd. It became a stand and it was very much to do with showbiz, very much to do with the showbiz traditions of the big spectacular, you know, with dancers and moving scenery and lights and lasers and all that sort of stuff. And, whoa, come on guys, that's just not, this is not fun anymore. It's just turning turning into a real show busy thing, you know, real Walt Disney stuff. Right. And uh, I think when we did it, it was a little more, it was a little more quaint, it was a little more amateur, it was a little more, um, you know, like going to see your, your local repertory or stock theater. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't all shiny and glitzy and show busy. It was a little more amateur and friendly and that, that, that was okay. It was fun, it was yeah. done in a, you know, it was, this was a, these were the days of Monty Python. These were the days of a slightly surreal, Kind of strange humor and, and uh, satire, and um, but it all got too uh, too show busy in the 80s, and, and so we really bowed out of doing that, and, and I have no desire to go back to that way of dressing or working on stage. It just w it wouldn't it would look so ridiculous for me, aged you know 56, well. to be going out and doing that kind of a show. And God help me, if the audience enjoyed it, I mean I, I would have to quit on the spot because I would I would hope they would share with me that is a lot more interesting to see real people in a real environment doing real music without the dressing up and the and the and the and the show busy kind of production which which then just starts to make it look less than credible and less than serious and um, I for one would love to see Michael Jackson um, perform again with uh, you know piano bass and drums you know the guy's got a lot of skill a lot of talent but I have no interest in seeing this guy trying to repeat his, his spectaculars of, of the 80s, which he clearly can't do. Um, but to, to go out and even attempt to do it would be a disaster. His last, uh, his last performances have, have been all lip sync, you know, just playback and, 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 uh, and have looked so ridiculous and been so ridiculous that he he's, has no credibility now unless he reclaims it by showing that, A, he really can sing. And, if we're interested, he probably still can dance, but I don't think that's actually a particularly good idea for him to try and do that. I mean, he should just go out there and just sing, just with a basic stripped down backing and do a bunch of music and in, in, in the way that, you know, you can, you can recreate things but do them in a different way. I mean, it's time for him to go and show that he does have some, some musical substance and some songwriting and performance skills. Trouble is, camera's gonna see him in close-up. 
That's the other reason he's not going to do it, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, unfortunately when you when you have, I mean, self mutilation to that degree, you know, is very very sad, and and the obsession with with trying to change yourself and change again and change again. I mean, it's a scary thing, but. Uh, you know, if you, if you know anybody who's attempting cosmetic surgery, please, if you can do it, bring them to the Jethro Tull concert and I'll, I'll put them right. Don't do that stuff. You know, we love you the way you are. You know, unless you have a real physical reason, you know, a health reason to do it, don't fuck about with that stuff. You know, it's just not worth it. Boy, it's going to make you look pretty, pretty silly when you're older.